from what I've heard from uh, the company I used to travel to North Korea about their contacts within the country and recent tour groups that have been there, the local population seems quite calm. They've had their first days of summer coming up, picnics on by the River Taidong in the capital Pyongyang, people playing golf. I mean, from what I, everything I hear, it seems quite relaxed. Whether that's whether people are just calm about it or they're not informed, I'm not sure. What, what, what did you learn while you were there about this apparent mismatch that there appears to be strongly evident in North Korea, that on the one hand you've got a, a society uh, which has the technological wherewithal to launch a satellite into space, but on the other hand struggles to feed its people? Um, I think the main reasons for that is they have a primary concern with self-defense. It's uh, they they put their military first. A lot of money gets diverted into that into defense. It's a partly a response to the the dubbing phrase of being part of the axis of evil, and then the invasion of Iraq. They've been wanting to focus on defense, so that's where a lot of their money goes. Yeah, I mean, is that self-evident on the streets? Does it feel like a heavily militarized society? No, I mean, from where you go within the country, within Pyongyang and Nampo and Sinaju, the, the military presence, I mean, there's hardly any. You see a normal amount of police, traffic police, people being pulled over for speeding tickets. The only heavy military presence you ever see is when you visit the DMZ or sometimes at checkpoints on motorways and things like that. Yeah. Do they love their leaders or are they just told to? Well, when I visited, I think fr from speaking to tour guides and a few people you meet there, there's a genuine passion for their, you know, the founding father of their country, Kim Il-sung. With Kim Jong-il, there's more of a, a normal view of a politician. How, when I visited, Kim Jong-un had only just come into power and they had very little knowledge of him. Yeah. Uh, we're saying you got in as a tourist. I mean, I can't imagine tourism bookings are particularly strong now for North Korea. Um, but if, if somebody were... 10,000 Western tourists a year, I think. Really? How easy is it to get in and move around once you're there? Um, you're accompanied by a tour guide at most times. You can ask for particular places to go, like visit the circus, particular restaurants, ice skating. But usually these things are all agreed in advance and approved or not approved by the Central Tourism Agency. Applying for a visa is usually handled by the travel agencies, but it is something you can organise yourself. Yeah. And, uh, and we, we've constantly got this contradiction at the moment in our coverage of events in, in the peninsula. On the one hand, some people are saying, look, We've heard all this bluster before. There's actually not a great deal to be really worried about. Others are saying you can't really take chances when you've got ballistic missiles and a nuclear weapons program in operation. Would, would you go back right now? Yeah, I would, I would personally be happy to go back right now. I mean, the current situation that's developing with the, the fueled missile to launch, the exact same missile test was done in 2009 over, the, over Japan into the Pacific Sea. And at that point, they had nuclear you know, successful nuclear tests. I think what's making it more worried now is the build-up of rhetoric and also the fact that there's rumours of a power struggle within the country.